Welcome to another episode of the Respect and Pray Show. I am your host, Miguel McNadina, Triple M. On this episode, I am so happy to have this brother on the episode because he is someone that I've known basically my entire life. Um, we went to every school together. I have traveled with him. Um, at times, he was even my gym partner. But this guy, he's overcome some tough obstacles um i've seen his transformation from a from a body on fitness standpoint and it's gonna be a very interesting interview for you guys to tune in because he has grown so much throughout the years and i've seen it i've seen it so Stay tuned for this interview. It will be a great one. Ladies and gentlemen, it's a great honor to present to you my longtime neighbor and my co-host of my show, Hockey Playoff Edition with Mike and Xavier, Xavier Guerrero. Xavier, thank you for joining me today. Hey, what's up, Mike? Good morning, guys. Happy Monday. Happy New Week to this loving uh, month of May we're having so far. How's everybody doing? It certainly is. So I want to start with, um, because you're a swimming instructor, I want to start there because I feel like you've been doing this for such a long time. And my question to you is, what inspired you to become a swimming instructor and for how long you've been doing this? So there's a funny story of how I even got into swimming in general. Um, back in high this good this goes back back to high school um back to high school i never really gotten crazy with the gym periods uh choice at, at, at in high school if i'm not mistaken my first semester in high school i got glued into doing rotc as a freshman because i had nobody there i didn't know nobody and i'm more or less got reeled in you could more or less say it's an rotc and it, if you if you remember if you recall ROTC counted as a gym period. So I never really had gym until my second semester in freshman year. After that, I did the regular gym period. I was not crazy about it because it's just basketball. Um, I like basketball, but I'm not crazy about playing as much as, you know, the other people in the neighborhood are. So sophomore year, if I'm not mistaken, I ended up taking weight training as a, as a, as a gym period and that went all the way through senior year of my la of my first semester of senior year and then this I decided to leave due to the fact that one of my favorite teachers was not there anymore he ended up leaving or either retiring or whatever the case was he was just not there anymore and it became that the gym period was just the baseball coach and all his jockey uh, all the jocks and I didn't like the environment I, it was just not I was not fitting it and then I decided, you know what, for my last semester of high school, let me do swimming as a gym period. I ended up getting into it. I did, I did swimming. Um, it was fun. It was exciting. It was relatively new. I knew how to swim, but to properly know how to, you know, different strokes and, and also how to perfect the form of swimming. That was, that was, that was you know, the, 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 the deal, the seal of the deal for me. And then it got to the point where, we were nearing close to the summertime. I would say around this time of the year, May and June, you know what I mean? So, you know, that semester, the semester is almost over. And then our swimming teacher, Ms. Sats, you know, bless her. Um, she was like, hey, if you guys are looking for a job for the summer, Riverbank State Park is holding the, the Red Cross certification courses. So that's when I decided to join the courses. I ended up taking the courses, getting the course. And then, long story short, I ended up getting a job at Riverbank State Park for the summer of 2009. And hilar hilarious enough, I was not, um, it was only supposed to be a summer job. That's the funny part. It was only supposed to be a, fun a summer job. And due to the fact that Riverbank has an indoor pool as well, they run year round. 
th that year, a bunch of the lifeguards that were already there for the year round, um, they were leaving. It was their final years. They were moving on to other things. And there was room available. They liked my work ethic that summer. And then from there, I just became a full year round guard there at Riverbank State Park. I've been, you know, been doing lifeguarding since 2009. But it all fast forward to 2017 and where the WSI position opened up, which is the water safety instructor position opened up. Um, I went for it, also got certified for that and got promoted at my job. And now I'm mostly teaching classes. And one of the things that I enjoy a lot about teaching classes is being able to see someone's um, skill set improve from week one all the way to week 10. And the fact that that makes me feel good inside, knowing that I played a part in teaching that person or a child how to swim, how to feel better or comfortable in the water, and that I played a part in that, that makes me feel good inside. So it's one of the things that keeps me going um, when, it comes, when it comes to teaching and teaching properly as well. And since 2017 till now, 2021, I've been, you know, I've taught kids, seniors, adults, um, handicaps, uh, babies. I, 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 I probably taught all ages and all range ages. And yeah, it's been going relatively well so far. I, I am trying to, you know, expand my, my independent, my independent, um, basically, you can say my name independently so like that could have more private clients and expand more from where i'm at now congratulations on all of these years working at riverbank you met um incredible people there as well and i got to meet a few of them that one time that we were at um what was that place called this was back in 2019 i think it was called monkey room or something like that i believe so yeah I, I, if i'm not mistaken yes yeah so that, that's great um um you know, continue um, inspiring um, swimmers and continue to teach people because we need more of that. People, I feel like swimming is one of the things that you really must know how to like, must know how to do in life because you could be in a tough situation and, you know, when you're in the water. So um, um, continue doing that. Um, I want to get into weight training. You are a guy just like me. You know, we've been going to the gym for years now. And the first time I saw you what, um, in terms of like working out was actually in the weight room. I never, I was never part of weight room, but I would see like the group of guys that will come out of the gym from the weight room team. And I always saw you there. For those of you who don't know, me and Xavier, not only we've been neighbors for over 20 years, but we basically attended almost the same school, same elementary mm -hmm. school, middle school and high school. But in high school, there's four different schools. You were on the third floor health, right? Yes, in health, yes. Yeah, so there you go, guys. He was on health and I was on media the first floor. But um, during that time, it was weird because me and X, we lived in the same building, went to the same school, but we weren't interacting like the way we were in elementary school. But it took a, a throwback Thursday picture from, I'll never forget her name, Jahira. So shout out to her, Jahira. Yeah, shout out to Jahira. Yeah. <laughs> for, for yeah, she's another one that lived not in the same building as us, but in one of the four buildings. And she tagged us on a classic fifth grade picture. And from there on, me and X, you know, we it was like a, a rebirth all over again, you know. So, yeah. so shout out to Jahira, the suits for that. Um, so, yeah, um, in terms of lifting, um, did, did your whole process of working out started at G Dubs? Well, in G Dubs, it was more of a. I never really had the proper knowledge to do what I was doing at Dubs. Um, I never really was crazy, crazy about it. I, I, if, I, if anything, I found it as an escape, more or less, because it, if you recall vividly, um, after school, they would run a little weight training, you know, fitness program for you to be able to get your credits for those people failing gym. First of all, how the hell are you fit in the gym? All you gotta do is just come in shorts and <laughs> that's it, you're good. Um, but besides the point, they were, there was an, an after school activity where they could help you, you know, gain credits for your gym so like that you'd be able to graduate. So me and the guys at the time, we knew about the program. We were cool with the teacher, like I said, you know, beforehand, Mr. Bianca Rosa, one of my dudes, that when he left, it was like the whole dynamic change. I was not with it no more, but anyway, he was there. He knew us. He let us in. You know, he knew that we were doing our thing. But 
it was nice to leave home in school, come home, um, put, get your gym gear on, whatever, do what you got to do, drink your protein shake, and then go, go back to school and then know that you're going to be there for two, two, three hours at a time and you're not going to be out in the streets. Um, I never was a street kid. I never was a, a, a kid of the streets. I always kept my, myself busy with, with things that I like to do. And weight training was one of those things in, in, in where you find the peace of mind. I would say that in high school, yes, it was the, the first open world to me and in, introduced to weights and stuff like that. And on top of that, during my high school years, I was also back at wrestling. I was doing the whole wrestling thing. So it was like a, a thing in where I needed to also stay in shape and also stay, you know, athletic enough you know, to do the things that I was doing outside of that. Um, once I graduated high school, um, I, I fell off heavy. I fell off heavy. Um, I really didn't have the proper determination to work out as much until 2018, you know, when I, I went through a very a, a tough moment in my life and where, like, I didn't know how to handle that uh, emotionally. So one of the next cases was like, nah, let me, I slapped myself in the face, not literally, but it was just like, yo, you got to call a spade a spade and you got to make some changes. And then I went, I started going to the gym again in 2018. And that's when like my whole transformation happened and where I was like 225 pounds full of fat. And then I, I slimmed down and, and, you know, got into the, into the form that I am now, which is something that, you know, I'm very grateful for. Um, I, I really truly believe that physical health really helps with your mental health, physical health. Um, it's the same goals, look good, feel good. So that's one of the things that I try to go by every time um, when I don't want to go to the gym, when I, I'm having a, a, a bad day. Like, you know what? If I feel good, if I get a little haircut, if I look good, it's going to make me feel good. So that's one of the things that, that I really emphasize a lot when it comes to your physical health, when you want to approach some, uh, um, succeed in something when it comes to a, a physical goal, like a fitness goal, I would say. So, yeah, I mean... It's a, it's a, it's very therapeutic to me. It's something that I think everybody should do at their own pace. If you don't know what you're doing, I highly consider getting a coach. Coaches really do make a hell of a difference. They know what they're talking about. They know what they're doing. And yeah, it's just a, a very exciting thing. And I don't think that I'm ever going to uh, shy away from it the older I get. Which venue? Will you prefer to go see live World, um, World Series at Fenway or the Stanley Cup Finals at TD Garden? Oh, and they're both clinchers. I am going to go with the Bruins hosting the Stanley Cup because do, do I have to give an explanation or just boom, just say it? Um, you don't have to. You just, it's just oh, say it. Yeah. Okay. Uh, uh, it's a Cubs. tough one. It's Stanley Cup. The toughest trophy to win in sports. It would be beautiful to see you live. Alex Ovechkin or Sidney Crosby? Mm, Sidney Crosby. That hockey IQ is just top notch. I'm sorry. <laughs> Yo hago lo que me da la gana or un verano sin ti? Damn, you violated me right now. I'm gonna get I'm gonna get my head decapitated for this one. Un verano sin ti. Daddy Yankee or Don Omar? Wow. Damn. I'm gonna go, I'm gonna go with the legend, the big boss, Daddy Yankee. No disrespect to Don Omar, though. <laughs> A place that you would like to travel, but you haven't been there yet. Italy or Colombia? Oh shit. Um I'm gonna go Colombia. Nice, nice. All right, all right. Not bad, not bad. Yeah, Colombian. <laughs> you got something going on? Yeah. Soon? Yeah, yeah, I do actually. Um, I am going to be collabing with my boy Mike Medina, long, long neighbor of mine. Um, we're gonna be covering the any the Stanley Cup playoffs. Um, they start next week, if I'm not mistaken, May third. That's okay. hockey, right? Yeah, hockey. Okay, okay, I'm a big okay, hockey okay, fan. Okay. Shout out Team Canada. So yeah, Mike, he um he's a director, producer, and he also does um little um if I'm not mistaken, like news articles, sports news articles. And so we're gonna be dropping weekly episodes, five minutes long or so, just predicting the NHL playoffs and um discussing 
every matchup. And even when the rounds continue, we're also going to go all the way until there's declared a winner. You're also the co-host of the Year Podcast. And I first heard about the Year Podcast when I think you joined episode 93. I think you have a, a Mighty Morphin Power Ranger shirt, which I love, by the way. Um, yeah. <laughs> How did that come about? So, yeah, podcasting, wow. I, um, who would have thought that I was going to be in front of a camera week in, week out? Um, so the whole podcasting thing started, and it's all thanks to my boy Matthew, a.k.a. Fridge. He's also my co-host in the, on the pod. I, I, I'm going to first uh, start off how I, I met Fridge. So I met Fridge through my boy Rafi. He used to live here. He he went to Dubs also as well. He was living here for um, not too long ago. I think he, he moved to Florida, I believe, like a, a little bit after the, the, the 2020, if I'm not mistaken. So early 2021, he had bounced to Florida. He moved to Florida. Um, but through him, I met my boy, Matt, which is Fridge. So I met him through him. He liked me. He liked um, my aura. He liked who I was at the first, and he already got a feel of who I am. We were following each other on social media. So he also kind of knew that I was a little outside of the box with certain things that I say in post. So that kind of got him intrigued. And, and it ended up um, him more or less have, wanting me to be in the show as a guest at first. At the time, he had two other co-hosts. Well, he, if I'm not mistaken, he had one co-host and then he had two. So it was like three. It was a group of three of them. At the time that I went into that first episode, he was already having, I wouldn't say conflict, but I, it, let's just put it in the most best way possible. They just had different ideals or where they wanted to do with the show or what or how the show was going. So there was a lot of conflict in between the three and where Fridge was more or less alone in, in, in a sense. And in that first episode that I got introduced, he, he, you can see it I, when you see the episode, like, okay, it, it's official, you're my co-host, you're my co-host. And then from there, I thought it was a joke at first. Um, and that same day after the recording, our producer, Ed, and he also gave some word of advice to Fridge. Of, you know, I, 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 if I'm not mistaken, the pod wasn't doing well or wasn't going the way, you know, that people, that, that he wanted it to go. So he had some words of encouragement about bringing me on and, and, you know, really pushing the envelope of having me on. And I was excited at first. We did, we did, if I'm mistaken, we did that one studio episode and then we ended up getting stuck all the way to episode 100 and 101 and just doing Zoom calls. So all the episodes that we were doing was just Zoom, 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 was via Zoom. And we, I really ended up that, I didn't feel, I, I didn't say I was going to, I was feeling discouraged, but I wanted to be more, be part more, uh, be more part of it than what I already was. I really wanted to like, invest in it i wanted to like you know go half with fridge on the studio do what we got to do to be able to go into the studio and get the best product out there possible but if anything that taught me how to be patient and how to be more resilient into the work that we were putting on so we kept doing the zoom calls until we did episode 100 where we interviewed juan bago if, you, if you're very familiar with his sketches um and then episode 101 we interviewed locksmith owner uh, oscar so everything just kind of like skyrocketed through the Zoom calls, you know, like the struggles of the Zoom calls because we were getting a lot of views. We were feeling discouraged and it just kept us going, 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 going until this year. This year, I feel like we've been knocking it out of the park. Every week we've, um, we've been having different guests. Um, we have plans for the future as far as merch goes, doing events, doing charity work, um, all that stuff. We're trying to network ourselves and to do, be something bigger than what we already are. Um, but as far as podcasting goes, I never thought that I'd be in a position where I was going to go in week in, week out, you know, just talking, talking about whatever. And I like the, 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 the topics that we talk about, because it's all miscellaneous. We could get serious at one point. We could have fun in one episode. We could interview someone and promote their, their stuff. And it just helps us to network so much. Um, shout out to Lee Burgos, my cousin. When we had her along, that opened a lot of the floodgates. They're like, oh, yo, you know, these are the guys in the year podcast. We ended up having more people interview with us. 
This year we had um, Shane Swerve Strickland, professional wrestler, song music producer, songwriter, also podcaster. One of my close friends, uh, Santana from AEW as well. We've had so many people on our pod as of late. We also had DJ Crema, DJ Ultraviolet, two chicks killing the DJ scene in the uptown and Bronx area. So it's very nice to have those people who I've been friends with and have them on a platform that I'm also working on. And it's more or less like we're supporting each other in a way in where we're getting their name out there more and our name is coming out there more. And it's nice to know to, to even walk down the street like, oh, shit, you're the guy from the, your podcast. Like, oh, shit, you listen. That's pretty awesome. So that gets me excited. Um, as far as what the future holds, we're just grinding it week in, week out. See what other ideas we come up with. See where else we go, who we collab with, because we're we're you know we're out there. We're we're sourcing um, with 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 people. And before we go to the next topic, I want to give a special shout out to WTF Media Studios. It is down on two sixty five Canal Street. It is ran by Alex Media. If I'm not mistaken, he's also the, one of the engineers or the or the sound guy for Andrew Schultz, the comedian um wheezy also they're 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 the co-owners of the studio wheezy also does the horrible decisions podcast you should definitely check them out they're huge on their own right as well so shout out to them for for giving us the space you know for for not only us but other other podcasters that go there and you know rent out the studio for whatever time that they're going to rent it out and and the hospitality with everybody there at wtf media studios shout out to them they always take care of us they're always so nice to us and yeah, just a special shout out to them because without them, man, like I, I don't know, I don't know where 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 this pod would be, and I don't know what other studio would give us the type of hospitality that WTF Media Studios does. Where can we follow you on social media? Oh, okay, so you can follow all my handles. Go by Human Ever Thirty Five. There is no symbols, no nothing, just like that. Human H U M A N E R R O R. 35 you could also find that's for my twitter and my instagram my personal one you could also find um the podcast page on twitter facebook and instagram at the year podcast that's the year podcast year with three r's so you can't don't get it twisted also you can find us on youtube um, our link tree is on our bio as well so we're not only on youtube we're also on, on soundcloud iTunes and I think we're trying to do Google uh the, the Google one we haven't uh, touched that one yet but yeah we're trying to expand for for other users who also use Google um podcasts as well so yeah you can find me at human ever 35 and the your podcast there you have it folks x thank you so much for taking the time to do this interview with me and best of luck to everything that you're doing bro Thank you, man. Thank you. Same to you, my brother. I know that you're also working on your own thing and screenplays and all that. So any any successes that we got waiting for us, man, let's just knock it out the park. Well, that does it for this episode of the Respect and Pray Show. Stay tuned for the next episode. And always remember, have mutual respect, mutual love, and mutual admiration. So until next time, 